half of being into this stuff is working on it, kind of being obsessed with it. And the other half is like using it and riding it and the relationships that it brings you. My name is Nathaniel, and this is the Motorcycle Archives. Episode two, Ryan Cox. There's not that much of it left out there that's pristine. You know, most of it's been through hell. It's been around for close to a hundred years. It's pretty common to get an old frame or a front end or whatever part it is and have it be kind of thrashed or mangled. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you got to take it upon yourself to making it right again, making it straight, making it true. Every time you build another bike, you know, I feel like you make some kind of improvement. So this year you're an invited builder for Born Free. Can you tell me about this bike? It's a 1940 UL motor. It has a matching 1940 transmission. I've wanted to do a bike with a 23 inch front wheel because you don't see them very often. I think a 23 can definitely throw off the aesthetic of a bike if it's not done right. Kind of has to be understated. The front end on this is a two over VL. So it's been extended two inches. And I kind of did that on purpose to offset the size of the front wheel and kind of make it look like if you look at the bike initially you don't really realize it has a 23 inch front wheel because it proportionally everything kind of goes together in the past i've put together quite a few bikes and i was leaning on some of my friends for advice or help but this one i'm really trying to just do it almost all on my own you start thinking like you know legacy and like what are you going to leave behind who's going to remember you I'm at the point in my life now where I'm, I'm ready to have a kid. To experience that, whether it's a boy or a girl, and like hopefully they show some kind of interest in this, this stuff and I can pass on some of my knowledge or who knows, give them some stuff to carry on. Because if not, it's like you see old guys pass away and they don't have family to give their things to and where does that stuff go? It just ends up, you know, with some stranger. I don't know, I, that kind of stuff's been on my mind a lot lately, I guess because I'm like, freshly single and it's kind of been honestly like the last year has been kind of rough but mm -hmm. I'm thankful that I have something like this to focus on in the hard times especially <laughs> no, I was wondering when I wasn't hearing anything uh, yeah I built this one but not not the not the one I'm doing right now though. This is a oh, older one. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> this is 1948, and my house is 1948. And my pan head is 1948. What attracted you to working on such older machines? I'm an analog guy. I'm not really part of the digital age and I don't really care to be, but between 36 and 57, for me, are the glory days of Harley. This is an original early panhead primary cover, like I'm sure original chrome that over the years, somebody's leg was rubbing on this and wore off all the chrome. It just has such an insane patina to it, you know, and the story behind it, you know, I don't know the story, but it's just beautiful to me. One of my best friends, Troy Critchlow, a lot of people know him as Chico Moto. He passed away in 2019 from cancer. But uh, he, you know, we've been friends for many years and he's obsessed with, was obsessed with the vintage motorcycle chopper scene. And he's a super talented photographer and stuff and everybody loved him. And he started in, before he even started, we talk about it and he's like, I wanna do this thing called Death Valley Run, you know, and kind of molded after the way guys did it back in the 60s and 70s from talking in conversation with those guys that did it. So he started it. It's been 14 years ago now, I think, 13 or 14 years ago. And it just, it caught on, you know, the first year there was like 15 people maybe, and then now there's like 60 or 70 that go. And he passed away in 2019, and that was super hard. But um, me and our, our close group of friends, we wanted to keep it going in his honor, and I know he would want that. So myself and my friend Ryan Grossman, me and him organize it every year now. It sounds like a brotherhood kind of, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know? And everybody talks about it throughout the year, like, oh, I can't wait for DVR, you know? And like, what are we doing different this year? Um, but for me, I think about Troy a lot when I'm on the, on the trip, because, you know, 
That was like his happy place along with all of us. Yeah, it's cool to be able to keep that going. And I, you know, I plan on keeping it going for as long as I can. So a after Troy passed away, you know, his wife, Teresa, who's a friend of mine, good friend of mine, uh, she, you know, got rid of a lot of his stuff because she moved. And so I, you know, I asked for some things out of the garage and this light was the light that he used to have in his garage, you know, that lit all the time. And he spent out there working on bikes and stuff. So. Um, it's pretty important to me, you know, just to have that relic from his life, you know, and now it's doing the same thing for me. It's pretty cool. That's beautiful there. There's moments where you get frustrated and, you know, I've had my moments where I'm like, fuck this, I'm over it. What's it gonna do for me in the end? You know, when I can go buy something that's already done. But I calm down from that thought process and I'm like, I do this because I love doing it. And the feeling I get when I can take a step back when something's finished and be like, whoa, I, I made that myself. I don't know about legacies and all that kind of stuff, but to be able to make something that's gonna outlive me. In a hundred years from now, maybe this gas tank that I make will be in some guy's garage that's into old bikes, old chopper parts, who knows? I, you know, I guess that's a redeeming factor to the frustrations you have to go through to like make some of this stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm.